Secretary Chow, thanks so much for being with us. Let's start with infrastructure. Yeah. What happens next? We've heard a lot from the administration, we've heard a lot from the president recently that we could see an outline maybe within two to three weeks. So what does that look like? Well, I think the effort on crafting a really responsible infrastructure initiative uh, has been ongoing and uh, we're making a lot of progress. And this is obviously a presidential initiative. The president cares deeply about increasing the uh, the productivity and the competitiveness of our country through our infrastructure, um, uh, you know, uh, outlines. And so we're hard at work. And I do hope that we'll have something pretty soon. But we're also looking still at the third quarter because we'll probably come out with some outlines, some ideas. And then you know, in terms of the legislative calendar, it's more likely to be in the third uh, quarter. The president and you have gone to the private sector, it seems, yeah. for a lot of advice on this. You've got some big names at, at advising you, people who are here at this conference yes. uh, th this week. What, what are you hearing from them, if you can share about, th th that's really driving th the philosophy of this? Well, I'm really glad that you noticed that there's been a real effort to uh, reach out to uh, all sorts of uh, stakeholders and you know, citizens and residents, uh, people who use the system, passengers, we've really gone out to listen and to hear what Americans are telling us. And what we're hearing are so many interesting things. Number one, there's, uh, there's a lot of private capital that's very anxious to invest in infrastructure. They're kind of on the sidelines right now because there are not enough projects that are ready to be financed. And secondly, there are also barriers to the private sector coming in to fund, uh, finance the um, public infrastructure system. So we are watching and listening and also working on the infrastructure uh, proposal on two ends. One is the permitting end. Uh, we want to make sure that we are eliminating duplicative, unnecessary regulations that are holding back projects that can come online quicker, ready to be financed. And on the other end, we're looking at different ways to finance this infrastructure proposal as well. And that's very hard, as you can imagine. There are about 16 different ways of uh, financing or funding the infrastructure, and every single one of them uh, will have detractors. So we are working with all of the different ways and trying to do it in a very responsible way that will not increase a deficit and that will ultimately yield you know, the best transportation system in the world. So one of the key themes at this conference has been technology, yes. artificial intelligence, and clearly one of the ways that plays into infrastructure, or, excuse me, transportation, is autonomous driving, yeah. self-driving cars. How do you make the case to a fairly skeptical public, it seems, yes. that this is really, this is good, this is going to be safe, and it's really coming at the right pace. Well, I think you're asking, you're, I think you're asking exactly the right question, which we are as well. And, you know, our country is so full of creative and innovative people, and we lead the world in terms of innovation and creativity and, uh, you know, patents. But we also have to remember that we have to bring along the public and that they have to feel comfortable. So I, I very often challenge these wonderful people in Silicon Valley who are so brilliant. I say to them, you know, you do such wonderful things. Um, you're thinking about autonomous vehicles which can actually increase mobility, increase safety, but you've got to bring along the rest of our country because there are people who are concerned about privacy people who are concerned about being in a self-driving car and not feeling comfortable that there's no one in the driver's seat. So that is an absolutely important question. Our country dominates in terms of um, creativity and innovation, but we also have to bring along the rest of the public. That's a very important point. And, and one of the issues around autonomous cars yes. seems to be regulation and who's going to do the regulation. We've had states come out um, and, and start to at least outline what, what they're going to do. What's the balance between the states and the federal government as we move forward on regulating that area? Well, we're concerned about the patchwork of state regulations that are springing up. On the other hand, we don't want to overreact 
and to dampen you know, this tremendous uh, tradition of creativity and innovation. And besides, the technology is changing. To cite an example, drones, for example, people are uh, wondering, you know, how shall we regulate drones? And uh, as they go from state to state, uh, what does that mean for their operation? But then technology is showing us that drones are now able, perhaps, to be at a level where they can attune themselves to know when they're entering a different state. So if they're in California, they know they're going to follow this type of regulations. And then when they cross the border and go into Nevada, they know by GPS system, by longitude, latitude, that they're in a different state and a different type of regulations are required. So they automatically jumped to a higher uh, level or they decreased to a lower uh, latitude. So we are trying to think about, you know, about uh, doing responsible regulations amidst such incredible fast changes in technology. So we don't want to have regulations that come out like two and a half, three years later and then find that they regulate a world that doesn't exist or that they regulate in a way that dampens the creativity and uh, you know, innovation of our country. So airlines have been very much in the news uh, yes. of late um, with some passenger incidents and, and the reactions of the respective airlines and the carriers. How do you see your department's role in helping mitigate some of that and, and where does that go from here in, in your perspective? Well, we're obviously very concerned. And so we have put on our website, it's www.dot.gov, a whole passenger's bill of rights so that the flying public knows what they are entitled to and what their rights are. But I also want to emphasize that the airlines themselves understand that the passengers are their most important asset and that they need to listen to the customer, in this case, the passengers. So they need to take remedial action, which they are, and as they should. So I think the airlines are tackling this uh, problem very quickly, and they should.